You stood before creation, eternity in your hand. You spoke the earth into motion, my soul now to stand.
Hey everyone, good morning. And this beautiful morning, it's sunny here in Shoreham by Sea, that's where I am. My name is Lindsay. Welcome to Coastlands Church Prayer and Devotion this morning. You know, whoever's on this broadcast, you're so welcome. We are going to have an amazing morning this morning. Um, I'm going to, um, we're going to go through a devotional. Um, and it's the Smith Wigglesworth devotional, which I absolutely love. It's sometimes, you know, it's like so, this man, this amazing man of God who wrote this. It's sometimes for me, it's so challenging, but it's so, um, you know, sometimes when I read it, I'm like challenged. Sometimes when I, when I read it, I'm like, oh, you know, it's like takes my breath away. This guy has written this. And other times it will make me cry. But the presence of God, when I read it, is just incredible. And already I can feel the presence of God. I can feel the presence of God today for us as we read through this together and we pray through it. And I'm just going to tell you the title, then I'm going to pray because we want the presence and the power of God today because this isn't just another reading we just pray now I'm going to pray first Holy Spirit for the presence and the power of God Holy Spirit come come and bring truth and light and revelation into our hearts this morning as we read through this devotional, as we pray through the word of God, the truth, let every lie of the enemy be completely destroyed today. Lord, let your, the anointing that destroys every single yoke just be poured out over our lives today as we go through the title of this, which is freedom from fear. Freedom from fear, I just pray today, Lord. Do something new in our lives in the name of Jesus. You know, you look out in the world and there's so much fear, isn't there? It's everywhere. And, you know, it can come around our lives. Well, today's a day of, of, of um, transformation. That's what I really believe as we go through this and uh, see what God wants to do and what he wants to say. The strap line scripture is 1 John 4 18 and it says there is no fear in love but perfect love casts out all fear and I want to read that I'm just going to have a sip of water I want to read it some of it in the passion translation as well um because I pray today that we would just get such a revelation of the love of Jesus and what he's done for us. Because in that place of knowing Jesus and what he's done for us, that's where the perfect love is, what he did on the cross. But listen to this, love never brings fear. There's no fear in God. For fear is always related to punishment. But love's perfection drives the fear of punishment far from our hearts. Whoever walks constantly afraid of punishment has not received love's perfection. Wow. Now, listen, I just want to pray this over us and read this scripture, because this to me, when I was going through this, really spoke to me. And it's in 1 John 4.10 in the Passion. This is love the love of Jesus. He loved us long before we loved him. So he loved us long before we loved him. You know, like before I gave my life to him, he loved me. He loved me. All those things I did wrong, he took that punishment. It was his love, not ours. He proved it by sending his son to be the pleasing sacrificial offering to take away our sins. And I thank you, Lord, today that we just get such a revelation of what you've done for us on the cross. That there we have, if we're in you, if we're born again, if we've given our lives to you, there is no, we have no fear of punishment. That's a lie from the pit of hell. 
And I just thank you today, Lord, that we really get this, that we know that we're forgiven. We're forgiven. We're free. Fear has no place in our lives in the name of Jesus. And doesn't it try and come around us? You know, as I read this, um, there's been fear trying to come around my life in the last few weeks. Many years ago, it shut me down for two years. I was like, I couldn't, you know, it did. And it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's an everyday thing that we have to get hold of. But fear is such a lie of the enemy. And I'm going to, I'm going to get into the reading. Otherwise, I'm going to go off on another tangent. And I want us to, I want us to uh, pray through some stuff this morning. Okay, so I'm not going to read the scripture reading that goes with this, it's too long, but you can, and it's 1 John 4, 7 to 21. I just want to read through it. Here we go. Okay, this is Smith Wigglesworth writing this. Never, never be afraid of anything. There are two things in the world. One is fear and the other is faith. One belongs to the devil, the other to God. So let me just read this. I've got some little bits, some added bits to add this in, to just pray over us. Fear is a result of listening to the enemy, reason or doubting voices. And we, I pray today, Lord, that as we go through this, that we would get revelation and that voice, the lie of the enemy, would be shut in the name of Jesus. I just pray, Lord, that, that, you know, pray this with me, that we break agreement in the name of Jesus with the spirit of fear now. We break agreement with it. Pray this with me. I break agreement with that spirit of fear. And I, we, we, we repent of even listening to that voice and we turn around we turn around and we look to you. We change our thinking today as we go through this in Jesus' mighty name. Faith comes by listening to God, abiding and abiding trust in God and his promises. Faith comes by hearing, by hearing by the word of God. And that's what we're doing today. That's what we need to do every single day. Faith is built by hearing God. By, by, by speaking his word, by hearing the word of God. That's where our faith is built. If you believe in God, there is no fear. If you sway towards any delusion of Satan, delusion means false belief, which is a lie of the enemy, you will be brought into fear. We, we, we just, Lord, we just thank you that your Holy Spirit and truth is here now. The spirit of God, truth. Lord, we cut off those lies of the enemy in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I just pray that every single stronghold and bondage over our lives today, that anointing that destroys the yoke, the lies of the enemy, fear is broken. Jesus destroyed its power on the cross in Jesus' name. There is a place of perfect love for Christ in which you are always casting out fear and you are living in a place of freedom. We cast it out in the name of Jesus. And, that, and then it, the scripture he's, is, he's got in brackets is see John 4, 18, 1 John 4, 18, the one we started, started with. There is no fear in love. There's no fear in Jesus. There's no fear for us in him <laughs> but perfect love casts out fear let that perfect love flood us today jesus and then it, then he says be sure that you never allow anything to make you afraid god is for you who can be against you romans 8 31 and let me read this out let me speak it out over our lives romans 8 31 to 34 in the passion translation so what does all this mean? If God has determined to stand with us, tell me who then could ever stand against us? For God has proved his love, his perfect love that casts out all fear, all fear 
over our lives by giving us, giving us his greatest treasure. Who is that treasure? His son, his son, Jesus, the gift of his son. And since God freely offered him up as the sacrifice for us all, he certainly won't withhold anything from us, anything else he has to give us. Who would then dare to accuse those whom God cho has chosen in love to be his? God himself is the judge who has issued this final verdict over them. If you're in Christ, if you've given your life to Jesus, this is what he says, you're not guilty. He stood before us in that courtroom when the enemies accused us and he, Jesus has said, no, I've taken that guilt on the cross. That's my love. And there's someone who needs to hear this today. There's someone who needs to hear this. Get the love of Jesus in you today. Amazing, absolutely incredible, absolutely incredible. Who then is to condemn us? Yes, certainly not Jesus, the anointed one, but he gave his life for us. And even more than that, he has conquered death. Death has no hold over him. And if we're in Christ or us, that's such freedom. And he is now risen and we're coming up to Easter, the resurrection. Oh, on the weekend, exalted and enthroned by God at his right hand. That's where he sits. So how could he possibly condemn us since he is continually praying? He's praying for our triumph. We could just stay there, but there's, I want to get, I want to read it all. Because there's truth in this. Okay, the reason why so many people have gone into Christian science is that the church is barren. It does not have the Holy Spirit. We have the power of the Holy Spirit in, in our church. The power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord, thank you so much. Thank you, Lord for the presence and the power, Lord, that we are not a barren people or a barren church, the power of the Holy Spirit, miracles, signs, wonders, healings, deliverance, the power of your presence is in our lives, Lord. Christian science ex exists because the churches have a barren place where the Holy Spirit has not been allowed to rule. There would be no room for Christian science if the churches were filled with the Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, now over the churches in our region. Father God, the ones where there's no Holy Spirit, we just pray and stand together, Lord, that there would be a fresh outpouring of your presence, your Holy Spirit. Lord, just come and let there be revival in the churches, Lord, we pray. Come and interrupt. Come and pour your presence and your love and your power into every single church and more for us lord we pray in the name of jesus but because the churches had nothing then the needy people went to the devil to fill the void and he persuaded them that they had something and what was that something religion like religion like the pharisees and the sordises you know no power no power now the same people are coming out knowing that they have nothing, only a wilderness experience. And I just, as I read that this morning, as I was going through this, I went to Isaiah 43, 19, where it says, you know, God is, and I really believe is doing a new thing, you know, as we come into Passover and, and East, and we, as we come into Passover, that God is doing a new thing, breaking through as we, we go through as we pass over into the new. And I love this because it says, making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. And I just pray that over us, over the people who, you know, who, who maybe have come out of a church and they're in the wilderness. Lord, bring them back in, we pray. Bring them back in to the church, Lord. Let them see, Lord, that you are making a way. Make a way for them in their wilderness pour out streams of living water lord into their lives and bring them back in bring them back in by your love lord let us save ourselves from all this trouble by letting the holy spirit fill our hearts 
Come and fill our hearts afresh this morning, Lord, with your love, your perfect love that casts out all fear. Let it just come around our hearts afresh today. The power of your presence, Lord, the power of your presence, let it break through. As we sang that song, what did I write down? Lord, we offer our heart completely to you this morning. Whatever's in our heart, Lord, we just pray that the rivers and streams of living water would flow through and wash out any fear and debris and bring truth and revelation of your word in Jesus' mighty name. Don't depend on past tense, God's doing something new. Any past momentum, we're not going back, we're going forward. There's a new momentum coming, but let the anointing be upon you. Let the presence and the power be upon you. Are you thirsty? This is what he's saying. I think God's really saying, come on, guys, are you thirsty? Are you longing? Are you desiring for more of me? We are, Lord. We long and we thirst and we desire for more of you. More and more of you, Lord, that we could take this the gospel out into this world where there's so much fear. In the name of Jesus. Then God will pour out his treasures, out of his treasures, all you need today. Out of his treasures. Have a look, you know, um, look up that word, what his treasures are, and discover what he wants to pour out for your life today over your life and in your life, in your family, all around you. God wants to satisfy us today with his great, abounding, holy love that casts out all fear. Fear you have no place in us. Imparting love upon love and faith upon faith. If you have fallen short, it is because you've refused the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit be light in you, to lighten even the light that is in you. No darkness will befall you. You will be kept in the middle of the road. And let me read this scripture from John 1, 4. Where is it? That the Holy Spirit took me to, because I love it. And I pray it over us. A fountain of life is, is in him, in Jesus. Let that fountain, oh Lord, just bubble up inside of us today. For his life is light for all humanity. And this light never fails to shine through darkness. Light that has darkness cannot be overcome. And that's what I like. It's like no darkness will befall you. You will be kept in the middle of the road. Lord, let the light of the Holy Spirit, where, we're, may, where we may be, you know, not so, uh, where there's darkness in our hearts, Lord, where fear has come around, fear of situations, fear of circumstances, where we've listened to the lies of the enemy, because they, fear is, fear is from the enemy. Fear is from the enemy. It's not the truth. Lord, I just pray now where there's darkness, in our hearts, Lord, that you, your light would start to shine so brightly into the light, into that place, but into the darkness. And every lie of the enemy today would be dispelled and broken in the name of Jesus. Let that light shine, Lord. Let it be, not just now, but let, let us live in this place of light, Lord. Let you are the light. Your word, the word says, Lord, that you are the light of light. You are the light, Jesus. You are the truth. You are the way. You are the word. So let light shine. Let, let your word, Lord, be like a sat nav for us daily to guide us and direct us every single moment of our lives. When fear tries to come in, Lord, that the light would shine and bring truth and revelation in the name of Jesus. We so need him. We so need him. Okay. The next paragraph, I'm so hot. It's like, presence of God, Lord, just touch our lives. Be care, the next paragraph, when, care, be careful 
be careful when anybody comes to you with a sugar-coated pill or a slimy tongue. And I just want to read the scripture that I've got, John 8, or a bit of it. That's the enemy, you see. It's, it's not the people, it's the enemy lying. Um, John 8, 44 to 45, the middle, the middle bit says, this is the truth. This is the enemy. He's been a murderer right from the start. He never stood with the truth, which the truth is the word of God. The truth is Jesus. For he, he's full of nothing but lies. That's the enemy. Lying in his native tongue. And when I read that, and I just read this and thought, sugar-coated pill of a slimy tongue. Well, that's the enemy's lies. And I love what he said. Be careful when anybody comes to you with a sugar-coated pill or a slimy tongue. And we don't fight against people. We fight against the, the spiritual realm, the, the wicked demons, the, the principalities and the powers. You know, it's not people. But the enemy uses situations and people to lie to us like slimy lies and if they don't match up with the word of god they're lies the spirit of the lord always deals with the truth pour out the spirit of truth on us every moment of the day lord let us let us be so our hearts be so so turned back to you i'm saying this for myself Lord, that we're, it, we just come in, we're, that we're so alive for the word that we continually want to be in the truth. Lord, draw us back into the place of truth. Lord, we, I pray. And it says here, this is what we're going to do this morning. Give the devil the biggest chase of his life by saying these words. Lord, we pray this over us. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And don't we need one another? And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. 1 John 1 7. And I thank you, Lord, today that we walk in the light as you are in the light. If there's any of us on that side path, in the bit in the, bit in the dark, bring us back, I pray now. In the name of Jesus, bring us back onto the right path of light. Lord, let your love that casts out fear, your perfect love, come upon us today. Come into our hearts and bring us back. You love us. We're forgiven. There's no punishment. There's no judgment. We're free in the name of Jesus. We have fellowship with one another, Lord in this church and in the churches that we need one another so much in the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us I just pray today Lord Lord that your blood cleanses us today that we are washed as white as snow the precious blood of Jesus that was shed 2,000 years ago and is on that mercy seat today for our lives the price you paid for us, Lord, not just, you know, when I think about the cross, of course, but you, before you went on the cross, you were beaten and, and you know, the, the account of what happened to you, the suffering you went through for the joy of our salvation. Oh, God, we just thank you today for the price you paid for us, Lord, that love that casts out fear that's trying to cause us to get distracted or taken off course because that's what it does. And I pray, Lord, freedom today, freedom as we come into the celebration of what you've done this weekend, that where there would be such freedom, Lord, over these next Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Lord, in our lives, Lord, just freedom and revelation and a new, a new day, new things in the mighty name of Jesus. What was it I was going to say? Holy Spirit, Kara Mashtia, Yalala Maki Mashtia. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you for that blood and that resurrection power. You rose from the dead. You have risen from the dead. You've conquered fear. You've conquered sin. You've conquered sickness and disease. You've conquered death. Death could not hold you down. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Jesus. Healing power flow now and touch people's lives, I pray. In the name of Jesus, touch people where they need touching, I pray. In the name of Jesus, we're coming in to the end. Look to the coming of the Lord. This really, really spoke to me. All of it did, but this bit did. Look to the coming of the Lord. Be at peace. Live in peace. I just want to live in peace. Lord, we pray for your peace that surpasses all understanding to flood us now in our hearts. You are the Prince of Peace, Jesus. You are the Prince of Peace. Forgive and learn to forgive. Never bear malice. Don't hold any grudge against anyone. Forgive everybody. It does not matter whether they forgive you or not. You must forgive them. That can be challenging, but it's so true. And we can ask the Holy Spirit this morning to search our hearts. That's what we do. Lord, if there's anyone in our, in our that you want to show us that we're not hold, we're holding on to unforgiveness, show us. And Lord, help us to help us, Holy Spirit, to let go and forgive. And that's where the freedom comes. Live in forgiveness. Let us be a people who live in forgiveness. Because if we don't forgive, you've not forgiven us. That's what your word says. Live in repentance. Repentance isn't just saying sorry. Repentance is a change of mind and a turning back to God. And Lord, if we live in forgiveness and we live in for repentance, help us to do that, Lord. Live wholeheartedly. We want to live wholeheartedly for Jesus. And then it says, the last bit, set your house in order for God's son is coming to take, for God's son is coming to take what is in the house. And I was, I looked at Hezekiah, you know, when I, when I read that, which I won't go into, but he, he was given 15 more years. He was dying, dying. And he turned his face to the wall and he prayed and God restored him from sickness and he gave him 15 more years. And I just thought, you know, um, set your house in order. Lord, we just, I just pray as we, as we finish. Whatever that means to each one of us today, setting our house in order. You know, we've had a lot of change in our home and I've been moving stuff around in the house um, recently. Um, you know, making things look different. We've moved, as I say, we've moved a lot of stuff around, but it's like, what about our hearts? Where are our hearts this morning with God? What does He want to do in our hearts? And don't let fear come in, it casts out perfect love, casts out fears because He loves us. But Lord, let us be a people, let us be a people who set our house, our hearts in order for you are surely coming. Whatever that takes, Lord, that we constantly surrender our hearts to you as that song sat, that we sang said, we offer our heart completely to you. And that's what we choose to do today and from now on in the name of Jesus. And the thought for today, the final bit is this, the cause of all deterioration is the refusal of the Holy Spirit. And let me finish with a prayer. Let's finish with praying. Join, join in this prayer with me. Oh, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, we love you, Holy Spirit. You are the third person of the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I pray today, Lord, that you would just really reveal to us more and more every single day by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the person of the Holy Spirit, that we would walk with you, Holy Spirit, like good morning, Holy Spirit, that we would come to know you as a person more and more intimately, that you would do that in us, Lord. If there's anything in us that's resisting, I pray now we ask you to forgive us. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are everything. You are everything to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Well, I want to thank you guys for coming on today. I really pray you got something from this morning. 
and um, we're on this evening at 7 p.m. So come and join us this, um, this evening, 7 p.m. on 9, where miracles happen. There's going to be a powerful word this evening. If you, you know, if you need whatever your need is, come on and, you know, invite people. You may have someone that you want, in, want to invite, you know, invite them along. Um, uh, you, you just need to, you know, maybe there's, um, Melanie could put a link in the, in the chat I, so people can get on if they're visitors. Um, we'd love to see you tonight. Have a great, great day. And yeah, Holy Spirit power. Bye.